Chapter 5 Morphology of Flowering Plants The wide range in the structure of higher plants will never fail to fascinate us. Even though the angiosperm show such a large diversity in external structure of morphology, they are all characterized by presence of roots, stems, leaves, flowers and fruits. In chapter 2 and 3, we talked about classification of plants based on morphological and other characteristics. For any successful attempt at classification and at understanding any higher plant or for that matter any living organisms, we need to know standard technical terms and standard definitions. We also need to know about the possible variation in different parts found as adaptation of the plants to their environment. Example, adaptation to various habitats for protection, climbing, storage, etc. If you pull out any weed, you will see that all of them have roots, stems and leaves. They may be wearing flowers and fruits. The underground parts of the flowering plant is the root system while the portion above the ground forms the shoot system. Figure 5.1 5.1 The root In majority of the dicotyledonous plant, the direct elongation of the radical leads to the formation of primary root which grow inside the soil. It wears lateral roots of several orders that are referred to as secondary, tertiary, etc. roots. The primary roots and its branches constitute the tap root system as seen in mustard plants, figure 5.2a. In monocotyledonous plants, the primary root is short-lived and is replaced by a large number of roots. These roots originate from the base of the stem and constitute the fibrous root system as seen in beet plant figure 5.2b. In some plants like grass, monastra and bunion tree roots arise from the parts of the plant other than radical and are called adventitious roots figure 5.2c. The main functions of the root system are absorption of water and minerals from the soil, providing a proper anchorage to the plant parts, storing reserve food materials and synthesis of plant growth regulators. 5.1.1 Regions of Root The root is covered at apex by a thimble-like structure called root cap. Figure 5.3 It protects the tender apex of the root as it makes its way through the soil. A few millimeters above the root cap is the region of meristematic activity. The cells of this region are very small, thin-walled and with dense protoplasm. They divide repeatedly. The cells proximal to the region undergo rapid elongation and enlargement and are responsible for the growth of the root in length. This region is called the region of elongation. The cells of elongation zone gradually differentiate and mature. Hence, this zone proximal to region of elongation is called the region of maturation. From this region, some of the epidermal cells form very fine and delicate thread-like structure called root hairs. The root hairs absorb water and minerals from the soil. 5.1.2 Modifications of Root Roots in some plants change their shape and structure and become modified to perform functions other than absorption and conduction of water and minerals. They are modified for support, storage of food and respiration. Figure 5.4 and 5.5 Tap roots of carrot, turnips and adventitious roots of sweet potato get swollen and store food. Can you give some more such examples? Have you ever wondered what those hanging structures are that support a bunion tree? These are called prop roots. Similarly, the stems of maize and sugarcane have supporting roots coming out of the lower nodes of the stem. These are called stilt root. 
in some plants such as rhizophora growing in swampy areas many roots come out of the ground and grow vertically upwards such roots called nematophores help to get oxygen for respiration 5.2 the stem what are the features that distinguish a stem from a root the stem is the ascending part of the axis bearing branches leaves flowers and fruits it develops from the plumule of the embryo of a germinating seed the stem bears nodes and internodes the region of the stem where the leaves are born are called nodes while internodes are the portions between two nodes the stem bears buds which may be terminal or axillary stem is generally green when young and later often become woody and dark brown the main functions of the stem is spreading out branches wearing leaves flowers and fruits it conducts water minerals and photosynthesis some stems perform the functions of storage of food support protection and of vegetative propagation 5.2.1 modification of stem the stem may not always be typically like what they are expected to be they are modified to perform different functions figure 5.6 underground stems of potato ginger turmeric zameen kand colocasia are modified to store food in them they also acts as organs of perination to tide over the conditions unfavorable for growth stem tendrils which develop from axillary buds are slender and spirally coiled and will help plants to climb such as in gourds cucumber cucumbers pumpkins watermelons and grape vines axillary buds of stems may also get modified into woody straight and pointed thorns thorns are found in many plants such as citrus bougainvillea they protect plant from browsing animals some plants of arid regions modify their stems into flattened apuncia or fleshy cylindrical euphorbia structures they contain chlorophyll and carry photosynthesis underground stems of some plants such as grass and strawberry etc spread to new niches and when older parts die new plants are formed in plants like mint and jasmine a slender lateral branch arises from the base of the main axis and after growing aerially for some time arc downwards to touch the ground a lateral branch with short internodes and each node bearing a rosette of leaves and a tuft of root is found in aquatic plants like pistia and ichornia in banana pineapple and krishnathetham the lateral branches originate from the basal and underground portion of the main stem grow horizontally beneath the soil and then come out obliquely upward giving rise to leafy shoots 5.3 the leaf the leaf is a lateral generally flattened structure borne on the stem it develops at the node and bears a bud in its axil the axillary bud later develops into a branch leaves originate from shoot apical meristems and are arranged in acropetal order they are most important vegetative organs of photosynthesis a typical leaf consists of three main parts leaf base petiole and lamina figure 5.7a the leaf is attached to the stem by the leaf base and may be a two lateral small leaf like structure called stipules in monocotyledons the leaf base expand into a sheath covering the stem partially or wholly in some leguminous plants the leaf base may become swollen which is called pulvinus the petiole help hold the blade to light 
Long thin flexible petioles allow leaf blades to flutter in wind thereby cooling the leaf and bringing fresh air to leaf surface. The lamina or leaf blade is the green expanded part of the leaf with veins and veinlets. There is usually a middle prominent vein which is known as the midrib. Veins provide rigidity to the leaf blade and acts as channels of transport for water, mineral and food materials. The shape, margin, apex surface and extent of incision of lamina varies in different leaves. 5.3.1 Venation the arrangement of veins and veinlets in the lamina of leaf is termed as venation. When the veinlets form a network, the venation is termed as reticulate. Figure 5.7b. When the veins run parallel to each other within a lamina, the venation is termed as parallel. Figure 5.7c. Leaves of dicotyledonous plant generally possesses reticulate venation while parallel venation is the characteristics of most monocotyledons. 5.3.2 Types of Leaves A leaf is said to be simple when its lamina is entire or when incised. The incision do not touch the midrib. When the incisions of the lamina reach up to the midrib, breaking it into a number of leaflets, the leaf is called compound. A word is present in the axil of petiole in both simple and compound leaves. Word not in the axils of leaflets of the compound leaf. The compound leaves may be of two types. Figure 5.8 in a pinnately compound leaf, a number of leaflets are present on a common axis. The rachis which represent the mid rib of the leaf as in neem. In palmatory compound leaves, the leaflets are attached at a common point that is at the tip of petiole as in silk cotton. 5.3.3 Phyllotaxy Phyllotaxy is the pattern of arrangement of leaves on the stem or branch. This is usually of three types. Alternate, opposite and world. Figure 5.9 In alternate type of phyllotaxy, a single leaf arises at each node in alternate manner or as in China rose, mustard and sunflower plants. In opposite type, a pair of leaves arise at each node and lie opposite to each other as in calotropis and guava plants. If more than two leaves arise at a node and form a whorl, it is called world as in Alstonia. 5.3.3 Modifications of Leaves Leaves are often modified to perform functions other than photosynthesis. They are converted into tendrils for climbing as in peas or into spines for defense as in cacti. Figure 5.10 AV The fleshy leaves of onion and garlic stores food. Figure 5.10 C in some plants such as Australian acacia, the leaves are small and short-leaved. The petioles in these plants expand, become green and synthesize food. Leaves of certain insectivorous plants such as pitcher plant, Venus flytrap are also modified leaves. 5.4 The Inflorescence a flower is modified shoot wherein the suit apical meristem changes to floral meristem. Internodes do not elongate and the axis gets condensed. The apex produces different kinds of floral appendages laterally at successive nodes instead of leaves. 
when a shoot tip transform into a flower it is always solitary the arrangement of flowers on the floral axis is termed as inflorescence depending on whether the apex gets converted into a flower or continues to grow two major types of inflorescence are defined racemos and cymos in racemos type of inflorescence the main axis continues to grow the flowers are born laterally in an acropetal succession figure 5.11 In cymose type of inflorescence the main axis terminates in a flower hence is limited in growth the flowers are born in a vasipetal order figure 5.12 5.5 the flower the flower is the reproductive unit in the angiosperms it is meant for sexual reproduction A typical flower has four different kinds of whorls arranged successively on the swollen end of stalk or pedicel called thalamus or receptacle. These are calyx, corolla, andrisium and gynecium. Calyx and corolla are accessory organs while andrisium and gynecium are reproductive organs. in some flowers like lily the calyx and corolla are not distinct and are termed as perianth when a flower has both andrisium and gynecium it is bisexual a flower having either only stamens or only carpels is unisexual in symmetry the flower may be actinomorphic radial symmetry or zygomorphic bilateral symmetry when a flower can be divided into two equal radial halves in any radial plane passing through the center it is said to be actinomorphic example mustard dhatura chilli when it come when it can be divided into similar halves only in one particular vertical plane it is zygomorphic example pea gulmohar bean cassia a flower is asymmetric irregular if it cannot be divided into two similar halves by any vertical plane passing through the center as in canna a flower may be trimerous tetrameres or pentameres when the floral appendages are in the multiple of 3 4 or 5 respectively the flowers with brackets reduced leaf found at the base of the pedicel are called bracteate and those without bracteates uh, e bracteates based on the position of calyx corolla and andrisium in respect of ovary on thalamus the flowers are described as hypogynous perigynous and epigynous figure 5.13 in the hypogynous flowers the gynecium occupies the highest position while other parts are situated below it the ovary in such flowers is said to be superior example mustard china rose and brinjal if gynecium is situated in the center and other parts of the flowers are located on the rim of the thalamus almost at the same level it is called perigynous the ovary here is said to be half inferior example plum rose peach In epigynous flower the margin of the thalamus grow upward enclosing the ovary completely and getting fused with it the other parts of the flower arise above the ovary hence the ovary is said to be inferior as in flowers of guava and cucumber and the ray florets of sunflower 5.14 
5.5.1 parts of a flower each flower normally has four floral whorls calyx corolla and rhesium and gynoecium figure 5.14 5.5.1.1 calyx the calyx is the outer most whorl of the flower and the members are called sepals Generally, sepals are green, leaf-like, and protect the flower in the bud stage. The calyx may be gamosepalous, sepals united, or polysepalous, sepals free. 5.5.1.2 Corolla Corolla is composed of petals. Petals are usually brightly colored to attract insects for pollination. Like calyx, corolla may also be gamopetalous, petals united, petals polypetalous, petals free. To shape and color of corolla vary greatly in plants. Corolla may be tubular, bell-shaped, funnel-shaped, or well-shaped. Estivation. The mode of arrangement of sepals or petals in floral bud with respect to other members of the same whorl is known as estivation. The main types of estivation are velvet, twisted, imbricate, and vexillary. Figure 5.15 When sepals or petals in a whorl just touch one another at the margin, Without overlapping as in calotropies, it is said to be velvet. If one margin of the appendages overlap, that of the next one and so on, as in china rose, ladyfinger and cotton, it is called twisted. If the margins of sepals or petals overlap one another but not in any direct particular direction, as in casia and gulmohar, the estivation is called imbricate. In P, V flowers, there are five petals. The largest standard overlaps the two lateral petals, wings, which in turn overlap to smallest anterior petals, keel. This type of estivation is known as vaxillary or papillinose. 5.5.5.1.3 and rhesium and rhesium is composed of stamens each stamen which represent the male reproductive organ consists of a stalk or a filament and an anther each anther is usually bilobed and each lobe has two chambers the pollen sacs the pollen grains are produced in pollen sacs a sterile stamen is called staminode. Stamens of flower may be united with other members such as petals or among themselves. When stamens are attached to the petals, they are epipetalous as in vringel or epiphyllus when attached to the perianth as in the flowers of lily. The stamens in a flower may either remain free, polyandrous, or may be united in varying degrees. The stamens may be united into one bunch or one bundle, monoadelphus, as in china rose, or two bundles, diadelphus, as in pea, or into more than two bundles, polyadelphus, as in citrus. There may be variation in the length of the filament within a flower as in salvia and mustard. 5.5.1.4 Gynoecium Gynoecium is the female reproductive part of the flower and is made up of one or more carpels. A carpel consists of three parts namely stigma, style and ovary. Ovary is the enlarged vessel part on which lies the elongated tube style. The style connects the ovary to the stigma. The stigma is usually at the tip of the style and is the recipe 
receptive surface of pollen grains. Each ovary bears one or more ovules attached to a flattened cushion like placenta. When more than one carpel is present, they may be free as in lotus and rose and are called apocarpus. They are termed syncarpus when carpus are fused as in mustard and tomato. After fertilization, the ovules develop into seed and the ovary matures into a fruit. Placentation The arrangement of ovules within the ovary is known as placentation. The placentation are of different types namely marginal, axial, parietal, vessel, central and free central. Figure 5.16 In marginal placentation, the placenta forms a ridge along the ventral suture of the ovary and the ovules are born on these ridges forming two rows as in P. When the placenta is axial and ovules are attached to it in a multilocular ovary, the placentation is said to be axile as in china rose, tomato and lemon. In parietal placentation, the ovules develop on the inner wall of the ovary or on peripheral part. Ovary is one chambered but it becomes two chambered due to the formation of false septum. Example mustard and archimone. When the ovules are born on the central axis and septa are absent as in dianthus and primrose, the placentation is called free central. In vessel placentation, the placenta develops at the base of the ovary and a single ovule is attached to it as in sunflower marigold. 5.6 The Fruit Fruit is a characteristic feature of flowering plant. It is a mature or ripened ovary developed after fertilization. If a fruit is formed without fertilization of the ovary, it is called parthenocarpic fruit. Generally, the fruit consists of a wall or pericarp and sheets. The pericarp may be dry or fleshy. When pericarp is thick and fleshy, it is differentiated into outer epicarp, the middle mesocarp and the inner endocarp. Epicarp, mesocarp, the seed, endocarp. In mango and coconut, the fruit is known as a droop. Figure 5.17 they develop from monocarpillary superior ovaries and are one sheeted in mango the pericarp is well differentiated into outer thin apicarp a middle fleshy edible mesocarp and an inner stony hard endocarp in coconut which is also a droop the mesocarp is fibrous 5.7 the seed the ovules after fertilization develops into seeds. A seed is made up of a seed coat and an embryo. The embryo is made up of radical and an embryonal axis and one as in wheat, maize or two cotyledon as in gram and pea. 5.7.1 Structure of a dicotyledonous seed. The outermost covering of the seed is the seed coat. The seed coat has two layers, the outer testa and the inner tegmen. The hilum is a scar on the seed coat through which the developing seeds are attached to the fruit. Above the hilum, a small pore called micropyle. Within the seed, coat is the embryo consisting of embryonal axis 
and two cotyledons the cotyledons are often fleshy and full of reserved food materials at the two ends of the embryonal axis are present the radical and the plumule figure 5.18 in some seeds such as castor the endosperm formed as a result of double fertilization is a food storing tissue in plants such as bean gram and pea the endosperm is not present in mature seeds and such seeds are called non endospermous 5.7.2 structure of monocotyledonous seed generally monocotyledonous seeds are endospermic but some as in orchids are non endospermic in the seeds of cereals such as maize the seed coat is membranous and generally fused with the fruit wall the endosperm is bulky and stores food the outer covering of the endosperm separates the embryo by a proteinaceous layer called aileron layer the embryo is small and situated in a group at one end of the endosperm it consists of one large and shield shaped cotyledon known as scutellum and a shorter short axis with a plumule and a radical the plumule and radical are enclosed in a sheath which are called ciliotile and ciliorhiza respectively figure 5.19 5.8 semi technical description of a typical flowering plant various morphological features are used to describe a flowering plant the description has to be brief in a simple and scientific language and presented in a proper sequence The plant is described beginning with its habit, vegetative characters, root, stem, leaves, and then floral characters, inflorescence, and flower parts. After describing various parts of the plant, a floral diagram and a floral formula are presented. The floral formula is represented by some symbols in the floral formula. B R stands for bracteate K stands for calyx C for corolla P for perianth A for andrisium and G for gynoecium G below bar for superior ovary and G above bar for inferior ovary This is for male and this is for female for bisexual plants plus for actinomorphic and percentage for zygomorphic nature of flower fusion is indicated by enclosing the figure within bracket and adhesion by line drawn above the symbols of the floral parts A floral diagram provides information about the number of plants of a flower their arrangement and the relations they have with one another Figure 5.20 The position of the mother axis with respect to the flower is represented by a dot on the top of the floral diagram The calyx, corolla, and rhizium and gynoecium are drawn in successive whorls. Calyx being the outermost and gynoecium being in the center. Floral formula also shows cohesion and adhesion between the parts of the whorls and in between the whorls. The floral diagram and floral formula in Figure five point two zero represent the mustard fam plant. family brassicae se 5.9 description of some important families 
5.9.1 Favaceae This family earlier called Papilionoidae is subfamily of family Leguminosae It is distributed all over the world Figure 5.21 Vegetative characters trees shrubs herbs root with root nodules stem erect or climber leaves alternate pinnately compound or simple leaf base palmate stipulate venation reticulate floral characters in florescence racemose flower bisexual zygomorphic calyx sepals 5 gamosepalous imbricate aestivation corolla petals 5 polypetalous papilionose consisting of a posterior standard two lateral wings two anterior ones forming a keel enclosing the stamens and pistil baxillary aestivation andrisium 10 diadelphus enter dithicus gynesium ovary superior monocarpellary unilocular with many ovules style single fruit legume seed one to many non endospermic floral formula percentage bisexual k bracket 5 c1 plus 2 plus bracket me 2 a bracket in 9 plus 1 g below bar 1 economic importance many plants belonging to the family are source of pulses gram arhar seem moong soybean edible oil soybean groundnut dye indigo fera fibers sanhem powder sesbania trifolium ornamental lupin sweet pea medicine mulithi 5.9.2 solanaceae it is a large family commonly called as potato family it is widely distributed in tropics subtropics and even temperate zones figure 5.22 vegetative characters plant mostly herbs shrubs and small trees stems herbaceous really woody aerial erect cylindrical branched solid or hollow hairy or glabrous underground stem in potato solanum tuberosum leaves alternate simple rarely pinnately compound ex stipulate venation reticulate floral characters in florescence solitary axillary or cymose as in solanum flowers bisexual actinomorphic calyx sepals 5 united persistent valvet aestivation corolla petals 5 united valvet aestivation andrisium stamens 5 epipetalous gynesium bicarpellary syncarpus ovary superior bilocular placenta swollen with many ovules fruits very or capsule seeds many endospermous floral formula bracket plus bisexual k bracket 5 c bracket 5 a5 above bar g below bar bracket in 2 economic importance Many plants belonging to these families are source of food. Tomato, brinjal, potato, spice, chili, medicine, belladonna, ashwagandha, fumigatory tobacco, ornamental petunia. Five point nine point three. Lily Shea. Commonly called lily family is a characteristic representative of monocotyledonous plant. 
इट इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड वर्ल्ड वाइड फिगर फाइव पॉइंट टू थ्री वेजिटेटिव कैरेक्टर्स पेनियल हेब्स विथ अंडरग्राउंड बल्ब कॉम्स राइजोम्स लीब्स मोस्टली वेसेल ऑल्टरनेट लीनियर एक्स स्टूपलेट विथ पैरल विनेशन फ्लोरल कैरेक्टर्स इन फ्लोरोशंस सोलिटरी साइमोस ऑफन अम्बलेट क्लस्टर्स फ्लावर्स बाइसेक्शुअल एक्टिनोमोर्फिक पेरियांथ टेपल सिक्स थ्री प्लस थ्री ऑफन यूनाइटेड इन टू ट्यूब बेलवेट एस्टिवेशन एंडरीशियम स्टेमन सिक्स थ्री प्लस थ्री एपीटेपेलस जैनिशियम टाइकार ट्राईकार्पलरी सिनकार्पस ओवरी सुपीरियर ट्राईलोकुलर विथ मेनी ओब्यूस एक्साइल प्लासेंटेशन फ्रूट कैप्स्यूल रेयरली वेरी सीड एंडोस्पर्मस फ्लोरल फॉर्मूला बी आर प्लस बाइसेक्शुअल पी ब्रैकेट थ्री प्लस थ्री ए थ्री प्लस थ्री जी ब्रैकेट थ्री economic importance many plants belonging to this family are good ornamentals tulip gloroisia source of medicine aloe vegetables asparagus and gold chicken gold chicken artumanale summary Flowering plants exhibit enormous variation in shape, size, structure, and mode of nutrition, life span, habit, and habitat. They are well-developed root and shoot systems. Root system is either tap root or fibrous. Generally, dicotyledonous plant have tap roots, while monocotyledonous plant have fibrous root. The roots in some plants get modified for storage of food, mechanical support, and respiration. The shoot system is differentiated into stem, leaves, flowers, and fruits. The morphological features of stems, like the presence of nodes and internodes, multicellular hair, and positively phototropic nature. help to differentiate the stems from roots stems also get modified to perform diverse functions such as storage of food vegetative propagation and protection under different conditions leaf is a lateral outgrowth of stem developed exogenously at the node these are green in color to perform the function of photosynthesis leaves exhibit marked variations in their shape size margin apex and extent of incision of leaf blade lamina like other parts of the plants the leaves also get modified into other structures such as tendrils spines for clothing and protection respectively The flower is a modified shoot meant for sexual reproduction. The flowers are arranged in different types of inflorescences. They exhibit enormous variations in the structure, symmetry, position of ovary in relation to other parts, arrangement of petals, sepals, ovules, etc. After fertilization the ovary is converted into fruits and ovules into seeds seeds either may be monocotyledonous or dicotyledonous the they vary in shape size and period of viability the floral characteristics form the basis of classification and identification of flowering plants these can be illustrated through semi technical description of families hence a flowering plant is described in a definite sequence by using scientific terms the floral features are represented in the summarized 
फॉर्म एज फ्लोरल डायग्राम एंड फ्लोरल फॉर्मूला थैंक यू